Okay, you've looked at the uh, first projectile problem. In part two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a projectile, very similar problem, but this time the 200 meters per second is at 30 degrees. So what's happening here is uh, the 200 meters per second, the projectile is launched this way. It has a horizontal component and a vertical component. So let me break it up into those two pieces. There are my two components. This is obviously the horizontal, this is the vertical. And you calculate this, since it's the opposite side of my triangle, it's going to be 200 times sine 30, which is 100 meters per second. So when it's going at 200 meters per second this way, it's actually going up at 100 meters per second. This is the adjacent side. The adjacent side is always the vector times the cosine of the angle. So this one's 200 cosine 30, which equals 173 meters per second that way. Okay, as I did before, I've got my vertical column, which is the acceleration column, and I have five variables in that, and I need three of them to solve for anything in this column, and I use the five big five equations. In this column, I've got my horizontal information, much easier. I've only got one equation, V equals D over T, and we arrange that to D is equal to V times T. So I need two pieces in this column in order to solve for anything. Okay? The only thing that can go from one column to the other is time. Okay, so let's put in our numbers here. I know that the uh, initial vertical velocity, because this is what it's doing at the beginning, is 100 meters per second up. So 100 meters per second is the initial vertical velocity. I check with my sign convention, up is positive, this is up, so it's positive 100 meters per second. I look at the other information, I've got my horizontal velocity here, 173 meters per second. And I don't have to think about uh, positives or negatives, because this is always going to be positive. It's only this where we got up and down that we have to have a sign convention. Then I look at my other information. The vertical height is 40 meters. Well, the projectile started there. It went up and it landed down here. So it went up and down. But all I'm interested in is the displacement, really. And since it started here and then ended up downwards, it ended up 40 meters below where it started. So this D is 40 meters, and it's negative because it ended up lower than where it started. So now I've got three things in this column, I've got one thing in this column, and what am I looking for? Again, I'm looking for the horizontal distance, because that's what the question asks. Well, if I'm looking for the horizontal distance, it's the horizontal velocity times time. I've got the horizontal velocity, but I don't have time. Well, that is also the same time that's in this column. I've got one, two, three variables in this column. I can use my big five equations and solve for time. Bring it over here, put it here, and solve for my horizontal uh, distance. So let's put these numbers in. What equation am I going to use that has A, D, and V1, and it's got T? Well, it's this one. D vertical equals V1, T plus 1 half A, T squared. So I plug my numbers in. Negative 40 equals 100 T plus 1 half negative 9.8 T squared. So let me multiply this out here. 40 equals 100t minus 4.9t squared. Now, since this didn't cancel out, as in part one, I'm going to have to solve for t using the quadratic equation. So I'm not going to cover that here. You can look online how to get the quadratic equation out of that. You have to rearrange it so that it's um, negative 4.9t squared plus 100t plus 40 equals zero, and solve with the quadratic. But I've already done that. So the time is 20.8 seconds. That's my positive. And I've got a negative time, 0.4 seconds. Well, I'm not interested in this. It's the positive time. This projectile was in the air for 20.8 seconds. So I can put that up here. Since I have that now, I can bring it up into this column. I use my vertical information to get the horizontal. 20.8 seconds. I have two of the three. I can now solve for the horizontal distance. So horizontal velocity times time from uh, V equals D over T. 
So D equals V, I'm going to make that smaller, horizontal times T. So that is 173 times 20.8 is 3598 meters. So let's call it 3600 meters. We want to round off a little bit. Okay, so once again, I had all my vertical here, or my, all my horizontal here. I fill in what I know, I figure out what I'm looking for, and I use time going from one column to another to fill in the information I need. 